Good morning, everybody. I'm Matteo Tacelli, and I'm a gastroenterologist working at uh, the Biliopancreatic Endoscopy Unit of the Pancreas Center at San Raffaele Hospital in Milan. On behalf of my co-authors from Italian Pancreatic Committee, I would like to thank the Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Editorial Board for giving us the opportunity to discuss the results of our work, Reliability of Preoperative Pancreatic Neuroendocrine Tumors Grading on Endoscopic Ultrasound Specimens, a systematic review with meta-analysis of aggregate and individual data. Pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors represents a type of neoplasm that is becoming increasingly common in the pancreas, mainly due to the increase in life expectancy and improved abdominal diagnostic techniques. Nets are considered a variably aggressive neoplasm and for this reason it is important to stratify them in the most appropriate way in order to correctly decide on possible therapies versus follow-up. To do it, the WHO decided to stratify neuroendocrine neoplasms into well-differentiated and poorly differentiated and to establish an aggressiveness-related grading system based on proliferative activity defined by the KI-67 index. Today, the gold standard for obtaining this diagnostic information on primary pancreatic neoplasm is represented by endoscopic ultrasound with needle biopsy sampling that provides cytological or microhistological specimens. There are different possibilities for acquiring cytohistological material, and consequently, various articles have also been published over the years to assess which of these modalities is the best without reaching anyway a conclusion. For example, the specimen can be acquired by macroscopically assessing the fragment or by using a cytotechnician to determine the adequacy of the biopsy. Other possibilities are then related to sample acquisition techniques, which vary depending on needle type, needle size and aspiration techniques. Given the importance of preoperative grading in the prognostic evaluation of pancreatic nets, several investigators evaluated the correspondence between grading obtained by US FNA or FMB and grading at the definitive post-surgical histological examination. However, those studies are heterogeneous in terms of design, sample size, type of needle, and WHO classification adopted, and so the obtained results were extremely variable with concordance rate that range from 54% to 100%. For this reason, we decided to carry out a meta-analysis for individual and aggregate data with the aim of establishing the concordance rate between US and definitive post-surgical histology, and therefore assessing the potential sources of heterogeneity affecting concordance. In our meta-analysis, we included 26 studies with a total of 864 patients, and we found that the concordance rate between US and surgery is 80.3%, with a probability of error more skewed towards undergrading than overgrading. This means that with high probability, the grading provided by the U.S. will not be higher than the final grading. However, the probability of error in the other direction is estimated to be about 15%. This meta-analysis is valuable because it is the first to attempt to provide a reliable concordance value between US and surgery, and also because the results were mainly obtained from the analysis of individual patient data and not from extractive aggregate data. These results show that the US has good diagnostic accuracy for assessing pancreatic net grading, but it is not perfect as uh, 20% of patients are incorrectly located in grading categories. One of the data that certainly emerges from this work, particularly so from the analysis of individual data, is that in most cases, misgrading is related to very small differences in KI67. 
This means that it is true that you has misgrades, but probably the classification is too strictly compartmentalized, whereas perhaps KI67 should be understood as a fluid grading system. The other side of the coin is that uh, this work showed a huge variability of results between studies. To understand where this came from, we performed subgroup analysis and meta regression, which showed that the factors most associated with heterogeneity were lesion size and the WHO classification adopted. Another important issue to address the understanding why US is not 100% accurate in predicting grading. One of the most widely accepted and plausible hypotheses is that US samples only a part of the lesion, and since these tumors are often characterized by high heterogeneity, with areas of higher K67 alternating with areas of lower K67, it is possible to sample a non-reliable zone. Interestingly, at meta regression, we found a significant correlation between tumor diameter and rate of correct tumor grading. So, larger lesion most likely be a tumor heterogeneity. In the next near future, a common effort must therefore be made to minimize the risk of misgrading. One possibility to do it could be the use of artificial intelligence technique applied to US. In recent years, in fact, the use of these techniques, such as deep learning or machine learning, in all fields of medical diagnostics, such as radiology, nuclear medicine, pathological anatomy, and human endoscopy, has been greatly implemented. Although we are at the dawn of AI applied to US, some interesting proof of concept works has been published that bodes well for the future. AI can then also be associated with ancillary techniques of US, such as the use of elastography or contracts the medias that can be targeted, targeted at specific net receptors. Another possibility could be the identification by molecular biology techniques of proteins that are more accurate and less variable than KI67. I and all my co-authors so thank you for watching this video and invite you to read this article on gastrointestinal endoscopy.